Hi, I'm Gail Zuckerman, and this is Growing Older with Gusto. Each episode, I interview people who are growing older in an inspiring way. Whether you're 30, 60, or 80 years of age, these interviews will help to conquer your fear of aging. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our website at www.growingolderwithgusto.com. Hello, and welcome to Growing Older with Gusto. I am your host, Gail Zergerman, and today we have on the show Eileen Williams, who's a fellow podcaster herself, and she's going to talk to us about the baby boomer generation, the feisty generation as she dubs them, and we're going to learn some key, five key ways to grow older with gusto. Her podcast and blog, Feisty Side of 50, focuses on all the baby boomers' interests and their lifestyle pursuits. And she's a big believer that all these things coalesce, come together as baby boomers age, and they bring a certain value to, and perspective as she puts it, to all aspects of society. Her 20 plus career involves helping guide mature people into maybe their second stage or their strategizing changing of careers. She's a speaker and she's been on radio and TV and currently is involved with writing for the Huffington Post, Huff, Huff Post 50. So today she's going to talk with us on the show about the five key ways to grow older with authenticity. Um, I'm looking forward to that uh, and sharing that with the listeners and the viewers. So I'm gonna stop talking and let Eileen take over a little bit and we'll have a conversation about her five key ways to age with authenticity and how just a few key ways that we can do daily rituals in order to grow older with gusto. So welcome to the show, Eileen. Well, thank you so much, Gail. It's a pleasure to be here and gusto and feisty go awfully well together, I think. They do. I was going to say that your podcast, Feisty Side of 50, is so empowering and it certainly dovetails with our concept of growing older with gusto because you're showing by, we're showing by example, what you are doing and talking about as far as reinforcing the whole idea of growing older with gusto. So let's get to your five key ways to age with authenticity. I wanna ask you the first key I know that you talk about is identifying what you call identifying the gift of growing older. Tell us, how would you do that? Well, I think one of the main lessons about growing older is really that fact of becoming more authentically you. And there can't be a greater gift or a greater strength than really learning to embrace ourselves, to know ourselves. And I think if you watched anybody being advertised or being interviewed on TV, some of these older, even movie stars, whatever, as the years go by, uh, of course, the interviewers will ask them, how do you like being 50 or 60 or 70? And I think most all of them will say, gee, I feel so much better about myself. And I think the average person does too. So we do come into our own. And I actually, to use a metaphor, <laughs> I like to liken aging to getting a pair of shoes. When you get a new pair of shoes, they're shiny, they're bright, they're beautiful, but they can be uncomfortable. You can get blisters and they can rub spots and all. But as the leather loosens, gets a few more creases and a few more scuff marks on it, kind of like our skin, <laughs> we feel a lot more comfortable in them. So I really think, as I like to say, the looser your skin, the more comfortable you feel inside it. So one of the things is just really recognizing that fact. So, yeah, there was recently an article in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend about how they've done studies that people who are older are actually happier, even in COVID times. So I'm wondering, how do you encourage people who are over the age of 50 to actually identify their gifts of growing older? How do you do that? Well, I think one of the best things, especially for women, we have a huge biomarker that helps us identify we're growing older. And that of course is menopause. And I know perimenopause has a lot of uncomfortable qualities to it, but it actually forms kind of a choice point. You can really you know, mourn your lost youth and there's a certain amount to mourn in that regard. But you can also say, wait, this is a time for me to renew myself, to really focus in on some of the things that are important to me and to leave some of those aspects of being young and youthful behind 
but keeping your youthful spirit. And one of the things I think that is a huge gift, especially perhaps for women, is that we tend to come into our own power more. And I am myself, I'm in my early 70s. So I grew up before the women's movement, but I've even heard many young women today say, gee, I put myself last on my to-do list. And you think, well, yeah, you've got young kids, you're building a career. You do find yourself last on your to-do list, but age alone kind of takes care of a lot of those outside obligations and you really can focus more on who you are, what you want, and what you want to do with the remaining time you have on this planet. Another thing I think for women is we learn two letters, N and O. I don't know about you, Gail, but don't you think it's easier to say no these days than it did yes. before when you were younger? I agree. It is. It is. Let's talk a little bit about your second key, which is what you call conscious intention. What is conscious intention exactly? And how do you get people to live that way that are growing older with gusto? Well, I think conscious intention, now this does go back to my career counseling day. So I'm gonna spend just a moment talking a little bit about that. But uh, my favorite part of it was not necessarily the job search aspect, which a lot of people obviously wanted, but it was the helping people with exercises and uh, interactions uh, to really home in on those aspects of themselves that were true for them, where their strengths lie, what they value, what their goals were, so that they could translate that out into the world of work. And I found it's just analogous to aging. And the more that we can really focus in on what we value and our goals are, the more that we can provide a conscious way of living. And I'm just gonna go on a little bit about this because I think it's important. I suggest people come up with four or five aspects of their lives, their goals, their values that they really find important now at this time in their life. And I'll just give an example of mine so that everybody will get an idea of what I'm talking about. My first value is health because I figure if I don't have my health, you know, there's a lot of things that can go wrong, obviously. So health, Second is relationships. And again, this is broad. So I'm talking about family, friends, even uh, incidental relationships, but that is important to me. A third thing that is important to me is to have work, whether it's paid or unpaid, volunteer or whatever, that I find satisfying, that gives me energy and gives me a sense of contributing. Mm -hmm. And fourth is uh, giving back. I enjoy working for volunteer organizations. And fifth is spirituality. So again, I just wanted to give this as an example because I, if people come up with four or five things like that, and then every night, as you're drifting off to sleep, if you can review your day and say, gee, did I do something for my health? Did I do something to promote relationships? Was I conscious about letting people know I care about them? Did I do something where I contributed something to the world, et cetera, et cetera. That way, the intentions that you want for yourself and your life in the future become more conscious. And as we know, the years, the weeks, the hours, the you know, slip by, but the more we can be aware of what we truly value and the time we have left so that we do live in a conscious manner, I think it's all to the benefit of us and those around us. Those are all great, great suggestions. And to turn our attention a little bit to the third key, I heard or I read that everybody's tongue has a unique imprint, much like their fingerprint. Uh, I, I know certain people can take their tongues and touch their nose. I can't. Uh, I actually saw somebody once at my health club that could take his tongue and touch his chin, which is interesting. <laughs> but your third key is what you call honoring and sharing your unique talents. Now that definitely touching your tongue to your chin was unique. But what's <laughs> the best way to do that? Well, I, I definitely like that, I have to say. And in all my days in career counseling, I never heard anybody put that on their resume, but good point there. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> well, I, and much in the same way as I'd mentioned about the things that we value, I think it's really important to home in on those key strengths that we have. Now, we probably know at this point in our lives what we enjoy doing and what we're good at, but sometimes along the way, we can lose some of that side of some of that because of things we've had to do for money or something else, or again, in service of other people. But if we really take time to, just like I'd mentioned with the values, 
figure out something that uh, uh, career counselors call these motivated skills or core competencies. But I like the term motivated skills because when you're doing these skills, you gain a sense of energy, you gain a sense of satisfaction, they inspire your best work, you get those aha moments, I really nailed it. And so you wanna think very clearly on some of these areas, skill areas that you want to use more of that give you that energy, that give you those aha moments and that make you feel more in alignment with your authentic reason for being on the planet. Cause I think we each do come in with uh, gifts. And I don't know, Gail, have you ever heard of uh, an assessment called the Holland Codes? No. What is that? Well, I, I would suggest that you maybe and uh, your uh, viewers out there take a moment. If you if you really want to get clear on these gifts, again, these motivated skills, Google Holland Codes assessment. It divides the world of work or in, in many cases, the world of life up into three. Or, I'm sorry, into six main categories. And you will find your skill sets in one or two of these categories. And do we have another minute to briefly go over them? Well, no, not today, maybe for another show, but I- Okay, well, great. Well, then please, I suggest people go, like I say, Google Holland Codes, come up with these one of these areas because I think you're going to find some very interesting th ways that you can identify those skills that give you energy and make you feel like you contribute. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. So let's get to the next key, which is stepping outside of your comfort zone, which I think is somewhat scary for a lot of people and- what can you tell our listeners on how to kind of get over that fear uh, and go for it? Well, I do think this is an important one. I think each of these keys has its has room to be important, but this one can lead to a super amount of aging. And I think each person needs to ask themselves an important question. One, is my world expanding or is my world shrinking? And I think we know COVID again is a great lesson on this. All of us are probably feeling our world is shrinking a little bit at this point but aging can bring a world down very, very small. And all of a sudden you have been there and done that. You don't have an excitement, a sense of excitement or newness or any of these things. So I think it is really important that we push ourselves out of our comfort zone. And on my podcast, Feisty Side of 50, I got to interview someone who I really found a wonderful uh, teacher, uh, Florence Henderson, the Brady Bunch mom. Mm -hmm. And I was able to interview her a few times. And even Florence Henderson said, consciously, she tried to do something that frightened her as often as she could, because she didn't want to get stuck in that. So I think the best thing to do is ask yourself, what's the worst thing that could happen? And obviously, if you can live through that, go for it and really try to make sure that you are trying something new, expanding those skills, getting out there in some way and making sure that your life is active and that your world is growing and not constricting. That's great. That's, I, I, I appreciate that. I mean, just thinking like, what's the worst thing that could happen is a great phrase for everybody to latch onto. I think that's listening out there. Okay, so the fifth key that you give us is give yourself permission to thrive. What do you mean by that, Eileen? And how can people do that? Well, I think that we have to, uh, again, there's so much uh, oh, out there in the world about aging and so many, everybody has opinions and a lot of them are to the detriment of those of us growing older, we have to say. But I think if we give ourselves to really recognize how rich this time in our life can be and provide the ways that we can thrive and the biggest thing that we can thrive in any regard is the self-talk, is our self-talk. And I know you had a guest on recently, you were talking about neuroplasticity and our brains do change and do modify according to the thoughts that we use, the way that we talk to ourselves. I like to say, Two words are totally important, I and am, and whatever you put after that is critical to the way you're living now and a lot of life lessons we've learned in the past because the way we say I am to other people is important, but even more important, the way we finish the phrase I am, the way we do that to ourselves, it underscores all aspects of our life. And if you think now, you know, I, if you just kind of close your eyes and think, gee, 
I'm too old to get what I want anymore. I'm too afraid to venture out and, and do, I, I, I'm not good at X, Y, Z, or I am whatever. You can feel yourself kind of getting you know, your shoulders going in and not feeling good about ourselves. But if we practice consciously uh, saying I am and following that up with an affirmation that will strengthen us and you know, I'm confident, I'm sure in myself, I have plenty great more years on the planet. I I can contribute. I am viable. All these kinds of things I think can be very helpful. And I'm sure you've worked with people on affirmations, uh, right, Gail? It's here for positive affirmations. Absolutely. Absolutely. So can you quickly give us things that our listeners and viewers can do on a daily basis in order to grow older with authenticity? Okay, well, again, I'm going to kind of review some of the things I just talked about, but I think really critical is number one is that one about really home in, get very clear on your values and goals, write them down. You're not stuck in cement with these things, but make sure that you have a real idea of what you value and what's important to you at this time in your life and do that evening review. And then the other one is try to pin Point. Again, those motivated skills, the skills that you were born to, to share with the world, uh, the things that give you energy, the things that give you aha moments, make sure that you incorporate as many of those into your day as possible so that you are feeling like you are contributing because growing older is, uh, it, it, wrinkles are one thing, but feeling you can no longer contribute is a really hard thing. So make sure you're actively doing that. And then the last is what we were just talking about monitor your self-talk, make sure that you are giving yourselves those affirmations and that feeling of confidence, growth, excitement, and joy in growing older, because it can be a joyous experience uh, and an authentic experience if we just allow ourselves to do that. Well, thank you. Thank you, Eileen, for coming on Growing Older for, with Gusto and talking about the five key ways to age with authenticity. So where can our listeners go to hear and read more about feisty side of 50? Well, Gail, uh, first off, thank you so much for having me. It was a great pleasure. I enjoyed it. And I hope you'll come on my podcast too. But your listeners can go... Uh, wonderful. And your listeners can go to Feisty Side of 50 and 50 is spelled out. <clears throat> so F-I-F-T-Y dot com. And my podcast is there. My blog is there. And uh, if they'd like to ask any questions, they can leave comments, whatever. But I would appreciate anybody dropping by. And again, I'd appreciate getting to talk to you more, Gail, this time on me. Oh, thank you. And have a happy holiday season. Well, you too, Gail. Thank you so much. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our website at www.growingolderwithgusto.com.